The actuaries of the social insurance system say that in order to be actuarially solvent through the life of the programs, we would have to cut benefits by 25 percent right now wow. and extending into the future. That is such a politically difficult problem. All right, uh, Alan Greenspan, the former Federal Reserve Chairman, uh, talking with our Maria Bonaromo about fixes for Social Security and entitlement program. He says to which very few at this rate will be entitled if it continues losing money the way it has. So what to do about it? CNS News Editor Terry Jeffrey with us right now. Terry, good to have you back. Neil, thanks for having me. You know, what he's essentially saying is that uh, this can't continue. You know, you could say that about a host of other big government programs and the way they're structured. But that with the people up living longer and fewer paying in who are younger, uh, it, it's the math and the math doesn't look good. Uh, and that we, we've got a, a grenade on our hands. Do you agree with that? He, he's absolutely right, Neil. And we've seen this coming for a long time. One way of looking at it is, is this. In 2017, according to the Board of Trustees of Social Security, there were only 2.8 people actually working and paying some Social Security payroll taxes for every single person getting benefits. So in practical terms, if you have a family where the mom and dad both work and they have a teenage kid who goes out and works part time at a fast food restaurant, there is some stranger somewhere whose entirety of his or her Social Security benefits are coming from the taxes that the three people in that family pay. And, uh, and we are at a point now where all of the taxes that come in for Social Security are not enough to pay for the benefits going out. So we have to either take regular tax revenue or borrow money, which is basically what the government is doing, to actually fund the Social Security Or we program. could start phasing in benefits later for those who live longer and all of that, you know, grandfather that in. Um, we've already done that to a degree, raising the retirement age over recent years. Apparently, that's still not enough. Means testing has come up, and that, that's been met with some resistance. There's the possibility of, of making it limitless uh, right now, the tax on which you have a, a FICA payment due or what have you. Uh, maybe all of those could be considered, but uh, the president himself is that he's not too keen on these ideas, and he doesn't want to scare older people. But should you present it to younger people as something that would sustain the program for them as well? Well, I think you should. And I, unfortunately, I think if you look at the politics of it, obviously, every single person who's gone to work in their lifetime in this country has paid into Social Security and Medicare, expecting when they re reach retirement age to get a benefit. So the politics of cutting back on that benefit after people believe they've paid into it is pretty dire. And ironically, the Republican Party, which ought to be the fiscally conservative party, if you look at the demographics of the vote, Older people are more likely to vote Republican and conservative than younger people. So the people who have the most interests, the retiring baby boom generation, who are the ones who are going to help make Social Security even more insolvent in the coming years, who are the most likely Republican voters, are also the ones who are most likely to be hurt by an immediate reform. You know, you could, as I said, grandfather a lot of this in. I remember with the Grace Commission, remember that in the 80s with Ronald Reagan, and I uh, came up with ideas to help. Social Security, and he implemented a good many of them, and the idea being that you could uh, so gradually raise the ages of people coming into the system, uh, not so much for those already at that age, but, but that alone would do something. But I remember at the time that was met with a great deal of resistance. It seemed to work, seemed to do the trick. It seemed to add about 15 years shelf life to Social Security beyond what we were looking at then. How do you think the parties could address this that, that would be, in a way, not damaging anyone, make sure that everyone does get Social Security, it's a government promise program, it's, it's, it's not unfixable? It's, it's not unfixable. The, they say that they'd have to increase the payroll tax if they're going to make it solvent by 2.78 points, or as, as uh, Greenspan said, cut benefits 25%. Or make it limitless. In other words, right. no cap on the income that would be taxed. That's another thing that comes up a lot. Right. So I, I think the, the, the idea of phasing in reform so they're not hitting people right away, and but that they actually work in making it more solvent, as it needs to be done. I, personally, I believe that when you look at the fiscal situation of the United States, in the next four years, even under Trump's new budget, we're running trillion-dollar-plus deficits. The country, everybody knows, cannot sustain this. And Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are the main drivers of deficit spending 
and the debt. If we don't get it under control, we're going to have a much bigger catastrophe to deal with than simply people being upset about the reforms of Social Security. I'm just wondering, though, the tax idea will tick off a lot of conservatives. They don't like the idea of that. But I always think that there's got to be a mutual feeling that we're all going to, to, to address this together. And a lot of people tend to point, well, I want the rich to pay this, or the rich fear that I'm not going to pay anything for this simply because I have acquired a lot of income and, and wealth over my life. So nothing moves. Um, but I think, you know, Ross Perot, one of the great services he did to our country and for our country was to remind people about the unsustainability of a lot of this. And I think a smart argument, maybe using charts, could work. Yeah, personally, what I'd like to see, unfortunately, I don't think it's politically realistic at this point, is a move to personal retirement accounts where people aren't giving their money to the government. They're actually investing it. Yeah. When they retire, they control that money. Paul Ryan had a great idea 15 years ago. John Sununu, the senator from New Hampshire, co-sponsored in the Senate. George W. Bush wanted Social Security reform, but he did not that kind of reform. I think yeah. when you look back... It's very sad we didn't get that. I wish we did. It's the third realm. Anyone who even thinks about it, they're either throwing granny off a cliff or electrocuting themselves. Um, thank you very, very much, Terry. Hope springs eternal. We'll, 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 we'll change this.